classic scene from 1967, The Graduate, where young Benjamin has just graduated from college and his parents hold a party for him. And at this party, he's corralled by a friend of the family who comes over to him, puts his arms around young Ben, and he says, I have just one word to tell you, plastics. Because in 1967, it looked like that was the future, the plastics industry. We don't know if young Ben got into it or not. I think he was more interested in getting into Mrs. Robinson. But anyway, it was interesting. And it really turned out to, to usher in the era of plastics. If that movie were remade today, the word might be graphene, which is a fascinating material that uh, was first really categorized in 2004 by two Nobel Prize winners, or eventual Nobel Prize winners. They got the Nobel Prize in 2010 for basically doing fundamental research on graphene. Well, let me tell you about graphene. In fact, let me demonstrate it for you because it's easy to do. All you need is a pencil. I have my pencil here. This is a, a treasured one actually because I got it in the Ritz Hotel in London and uh, that has good memories. Anyway, take a piece of paper, you make a mark on the paper with the graphite. It isn't lead, it's graphite. Then you take a piece of scotch tape, like that, and you put it over the dot you just made, and you strip it off, and what you then have is a thinner layer of graphite. Then you take another piece of scotch tape and you put it on top of the one that you have just stripped off and strip it off again. Now you have an even thinner layer of graphite. Now imagine doing that over and over again until you have just one layer of graphite and that's when you have graphene. And it turns out that that graphene has properties that are very different from graphite. It is stronger than steel. It is more flexible than any known material. It uh, carries electricity better than any known material that is more conductive. It also conducts heat extremely well. And now it's possible to make that in larger amounts. <clears throat> They've already used it to put it into hockey sticks, for example, make it stronger, or to, to tennis uh, rackets. But uh, more recently, this material graphene was used in the making of some masks because it also has the ability of filtering substances. Just about nothing gets through it. But you can make a very thin layer of, of uh, graphene with tiny microscopic holes in it that will allow air to go through, but nothing else to go through. However, there's a but that has come up because Health Canada has said that they discovered that there was something being released by these graphene masks that could cause pulmonary problems. And they said that these masks, which had been distributed in Quebec now for about six months to schools and daycare centers, should not be used. They should be put away and stored until we get further information. <clears throat> we haven't yet gotten any further information. I don't know what they discovered. I don't know what they found coming off of these masks. If it was tiny particles of graphene, it is possible, unlikely. We don't know what the size is. We don't know what the shape of these things is. So we really have to wait to find out what they really discovered and uh, what is the potential problem with using graphene in face masks because it has also a positive potential for filtering. So we just have to wait and see. But for now, of course, we should abide by Health Canada's admonition and not use those, uh, those masks. But uh, for the final advice here, I turn to my colleague, Sherlock Holmes, uh, who I consult regularly because he is so good at making observations and coming to conclusions. And let me remind you of his famous dictum. It is a capital mistake to theorize before one has the facts because one insensibly begins to fit the facts to the theory instead of the other way around. So before throwing out the baby with the bathwater, let's wait to see what the information is that Health Canada has gathered about gra graphene masks and not vilify graphene as a material because I said 
it has huge potential in many, many areas. So we will wait and see. But for now, we stay away from the masks that uh, Health Canada has suggested are somewhat unsafe because of something coming out of these masks that can be inhaled.